I endeavored to start this series a few weeks ago. Uh, Pastor Joe, we started the series. Uh, we wanted to look at different Old Testament um, uh, men and women who had audacious faith and believed God, uh, dared to believe God for the impossible. Uh, Jehoshaphat was the first one we talked about. Jehoshaphat was one who uh, was faced with five huge armies, and yet God delivered the nation of Israel through the leadership of Jehoshaphat. And then uh, week number two, we talked about Joshua, a time when uh, the, uh, the only time or the only day in, in, our, in our history, in world history, where the sun stood still, if you remember that story. And so just in case you missed out all these uh, uh, messages there on podcast, victoryfort.org. And then week number three, Caleb. Uh, Pastor Joey talked about this beautifully, talking about, you know, uh, Caleb uh, going for all that God has promised and conquering the lands, even at 85 years old. He's the oldest. Uh, uh, he's uh, one of the uh, uh, most gallant and valiant senior citizens in the Bible, okay? Uh, warring and fighting and conquering lands at 85 years old. Today, we're going to talk about Zelophehad's daughters. Now, that's a long name. I don't know if you've ever heard of that name, Zelophehad. We'll call him Z for short. Uh, it's a long name, okay? So, but he had five daughters, and they claimed their inheritance. They had faith to trust God and believe God for the inheritance that was given to them. And so before we get into Numbers chapter 27, I do want to frame what we're about to talk about today. I want to talk about culture for a moment because culture is an interesting thing. When you talk about culture, I see a lot of internationals in the room, and it makes, it, it, it's what makes a group of people unique. I know there's, uh, there's a lot of, as I said, internationals uh, that come to the church, and those of you who have been here maybe a while, you may have noticed some of the quirks we Filipinos have, right? Uh, it's, it's quite fun. That's why they say it's more fun to, uh, in the Philippines, okay? Uh, I remember when my, um, my wife and I were missionaries in Russia, and very rare, it was in St. Petersburg, very rare that we would see Filipinos there. But when we would suspect there was one or two or a group of people, what we would do is we would say this. Psst. And if they look, okay, then maybe they're Filipinos, okay? And so, or, or, or you know, we'd shout out, balut, balut, okay, they will answer, penoy, penoy, okay, or pinoy, pinoy, okay? So, uh, and, and so those were ways... And then also in terms of names, right? So, you know, how many of you here you have an uncle that's named Tito Boy, right? Or Tita Girly, or Tita Baby, okay? So, I mean, we have really interesting names as Filipinos. In fact, we wanted to become, look nicer, I guess, I don't know. We put an H, okay? Bohong, Juhun, Bohoy, Daharel, okay? And so, or we repeat them, Dandan. Junjun, Jun, okay, Bong Bong, Mak Mak, Tin Tin, okay, so all these different names now, uh, you repeat, okay, there's repetitive uh, names, no, uh, you, you point to a certain direction with your lips, ba? there, okay, and you answer a question with your eyebrows, yes, yeah, um, and I, I searched the internet talking about, you know, when you search only in the Philippines, some images show up like this, okay, we are very creative <laughs> as Filipinos, right, we're, yeah, we're very adaptable as a nation, Okay, not, on, not only that, when you queue up a line, okay, this is what I saw, okay, you queue, <laughs> isn't that the best? I mean, look at that, okay, you don't need an LED, LCD projector or uh, that screen there, okay, you just, you know when it's your turn, okay, You're, you move and you move your chinelas, and then, uh, we get adaptable and creative. Okay, look at that. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Wow, six, seven people in one motorcycle, not even tricycle, motorcycle, two wheels. He's just uh, doing a balancing. He should be in Cirque du Soleil or something like that. Um, and then, of course, store names. That's a different story. Establishments, right? Okay, this pie store. Okay, they sell pie. Okay, why pie? Okay, <laughs> so that's the name of this store. And then this... Uh, uh, Drugstore, secure, because your medicines will be secure, right? So um, it's really fascinating. Um, and then laundry, uh, laundromats, okay, you get an uh, sumakum laundry. <laughs> That's the best. Of course, you have Lord of the Rings. 
Oh, gosh. Um, and then when you go to haircut places, salons, okay, you have Scissors Palace, you have Hair Force One, and this is the best, Starbucks. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, we'll get into the word, okay? I have a point here, okay? <laughs> um, and then bakery, okay, Brad Pitt, a knockoff from the famous actor and then this one's my most favorite of all living things <laughs> funeral parlor <laughs> that's the best isn't it um those of you are internationals living means to bury okay and of course uh, play on words living things living things okay so funeral parlor oh gosh and cultural quirks are fun they really are but, you know, in all uh, cultures, there's, there's good stuff about the culture. There's bad stuff about the culture. Uh, there's things that you want to uphold. There are things that you, you know, want to forget. Um, and here's the question, though, because, you know, what if culture becomes now a hindrance from us claiming the promises of God? What if now culture goes against and opposed God's word? And I, don't want, I just want to throw it out there today and say that culture, or sorry, that the Bible supersedes culture, any culture. Okay, if culture and Bible collide, then we will go with Bible. Okay, um, and so I know people who have said, hey, this is just Filipino culture. Well, let's, guess what? This is what the Bible says. Or this is Chinese culture or Indian culture or Japanese culture or Spanish culture. Well, yes, but no. <laughs> the Bible says this, and this is what we stand on. The Bible is the final authority for life and conduct. And so the question we want to answer is this, can you claim the promises of God in your life even if the culture dictates otherwise? Can you claim the promises of God in your life even if the culture dictates otherwise? And I, um, I, I'll, you'll understand this question a bit more when we go into Z's story. Numbers 27, verse 1 to 7. Could you stand on your feet? And we're going to read scripture together. We stand to honor the word of God. I'm going to read from... Uh, uh, English Standard Version, ESV, Numbers 27. <clears throat> Bible says, Then drew near the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Makir, son of Manasseh, son of Manasseh, or the clans of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. Their names were okay, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, Tirza. And they stood be before Moses and before Eleazar the priest and the congregation uh, the priest, before the priest, rather, and all the congregation in the entrance of the tent of meeting. Verse 3, our father died in the wilderness. He was not among the company of those who gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died for his own sin. He had no sons. Why should the name of our father be taken away from his, from his clan? Because he had no son. Give us or give to us a possession among our father's brothers. Verse 5, Moses brought their case, to, case before the Lord. Listen to this. It's, it's, it's interesting. The Lord said to Moses, The daughters of Zelophehad are right. You shall give them the possession of an inheritance among their father's brothers and transfer the inheritance of their father to them. And you shall speak to the people of Israel. Look at verse 8. Okay, I'll, I'll move a little bit further. He says, If a man dies and has no son, then you shall transfer his inheritance to his daughter. In other words, this became a statute that others... And other families uh, also uh, live by. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, thank you that your word gives us insight and wisdom to life. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we don't live life um, scrounging for wisdom or just, uh, Lord, crawling for the right direction. But Lord, today we're here because we know Scripture gives us insight to life. And thank you that the word is a light unto our path, a lamp unto our feet. And Lord, you will give us, um, Lord, application. Lord, let it not just be informational, but let it be transformational. The way we hear your word, pray that you would speak by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, even as we leave today after our message, give us wisdom how to apply it. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. You may go and have a seat. Thank you. To set up the stage, <clears throat> Israel was about to enter the promised land. And Moses, together with Eleazar, the high priest, lists down the clans, the tribes, the names of the families, and says, these are the portions that you're going to get. This one, this part of the land is going to go to this family. This part of the land is going to go to that clan, that tribe, those group of people. And so now, 
uh, the, the daughters of Z, Zelophehad, comes to uh, Moses and says, wait, 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 wait. Uh, my dad's name, our dad's name are in the list. Okay? But because culture says, okay, uh, that because there's no male heir, then they will not, you know, uh, sometimes what happens is the family gets overlooked. And we're getting overlooked because we don't have a male heir. And culture usually gives it to a male heir. We don't want this to happen to our family. And so now they fight for their inheritance and say, we have to have a land. Even though our father is now dead, we're supposed to get a land or a, a, an apportion. And so verse 21, they list down all, the, you know, these are just the names of, of the children. Uh, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirza. They're probably part Filipino because they put H on their names. Okay. Uh, but verse 2, the Bible says, I'm joking. But part 2 says, they stood before Moses and Eleazar, the priest, and the leaders of the whole assembly at the entrance of the tent uh, of the meeting and said, our father died in the wilderness, although he was not part of the company of those who gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but he died for his own sin. He had no sons. Why should the name of our father be lost from among his family? Because he had no son. Give us a possession. Give us land. Okay? They fought for their inheritance. They had to fight, but they had to fight to claim it. Some of you here, you have an inheritance from the Lord. Yeah, you're going to have to fight to claim it. Okay? It's not, God's not going to give it to you sitting down. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. And there are times you're going to have to fight, kind of like uh, uh, Joshua and Jericho, they had to still march around the city before those walls came crashing down. And so here they fight for their inheritance. Uh, what I want to answer today is a question, how can we claim the promises of God in our lives? What, what do we see? What are the lessons that we see from Z's daughters that we can apply in our own life? Number one, remember His promises. Remember His promises. The daughters of Z knew their inheritance and claimed it. Now, here's the thought. We cannot remember unless we are aware of it. What do I mean? It's hard to claim something that you're not aware that you, you can claim. And, and listen, the Bible gives us promises from Scripture from straight from the mouth of God. And we can claim these promises. And until we get into Scripture and read it, we will be totally unaware and live life walking as if there wasn't any of those promises applying to us. You see, unfortunately, a lot of people today act like beggars because they don't know the inheritance and the promises God has for them. I read an article. This was... Uh, this article was published 2012 about a man who, um, who was found dead because of hypothermia in winter of 2012. Homeless, poor, alone. He was, again, as, he, as I said, he died of hypothermia and some kids who were sledding uh, uh, found this, his body. And so they reported it to, to the police and found out that this man had a great, great grandmom who just passed away previous, okay, a few months previous to his own death and was searching for closest of kin or at least relative because you get Clark, that's the name of the lady, okay, great, great grand uh, uh, mom, uh, who had an estate of 300 million US dollars. And yeah, and Timothy Gray, the guy who died under the, the railroad overpass, actually was entitled to 19 million U.S. dollars. So he, he died alone, he died poor, and he died homeless, not realizing he had 19 million U.S. dollars entitled to him. And again, I'm afraid that sometimes people walk through life and not understanding that th there are things that God has you know, uh, uh, promised us in Scripture that you and I can claim why? Not because we deserve or because we're worthy, but because we are His children. Not because of anything we've done, but because of His grace and mercy. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4, this is what the Bible says. Because of His glory and excellence, not because of our deserving or because we're worthy or because we worked for it, but because of His glory and excellence. He has given us great and precious what? Promises. Great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share His divine nature. 
Now, this is important to note, to share His divine nature. Meaning, God's not, you know, I, I realize we've, we've, some people have slipped into, sometimes we all slip into consumer Christianity. What does it, what's in it for me? What does the Bible have to say about me and what can I claim for myself? I mean, yes, there are things that God has promised us, but ultimately, first and foremost, the reason why God has given us these uh, divine promises from Him, great and precious promises, so that we can share in His divine nature, meaning so that we can become made ho- be made holy, sanctified, become more like Jesus Christ. That's the main purpose, that we can know Him, become more like Him. God's not after your happiness. He's after your holiness, that you become more like Jesus. The Bible says there, somebody researched this, and there are different numbers, but you know, they say about 8,000, some say 7,000 promises in Scripture. Somebody said 3,000. So I'd say we'll go with a lower number. But even if it's a lower number, that's more than one a day that you can claim. That's a lot of promises, okay? And so there are a lot of promises we don't claim. My daughter, um, she has this planner. And, you know, I think it's called Belle de Jour or something like that. Okay, but it has all these different uh, coupons, right? And so, uh, you know, at the start of the year, oh, wow, great. We have, you know, free meal from, you know, Coffee Bean and free uh, extra drink from Coffee Bean and, or, 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 or um, Ace Water Spa. You get another extra if you buy one ticket. And so you, it's, it's listed there, right? And so we said, okay, let's do this. You know, at the end of last year, we realized that we didn't claim any of those coupons. <laughs> okay, and so it's like, what? Okay, but you know, we get busy in life and we begin to, after the end of the year, and we realize, wow, I didn't even claim any of the promises God has for me. I didn't even get into the Word. I didn't even read these promises. Let me give you a few to make you all the more appreciate the Word of God. Matthew 11 says, come to me all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. It says rest. Some of you need this, okay? It's just uh, I think Joey said it earlier. Said uh, we just we're just in January and you feel stressed already. You feel tired already. Okay, um, you know we we go to every conceivable place and person except God. We go to a movie to amuse us. You know we go to our gadget to entertain us. You know we watch on online or YouTube or go to friends to chat and all that. Okay, we go to Instagram and check how many likes we got, right? And we feel bad. What? She didn't like this post, you know? I only got five likes, you know, right? So you're, you're, you're stressed over it now, okay? And you compare, and you begin to compare. And you see, the more we compare, the more stressful life becomes, the less satisfied we become. And so rest. Jesus says, come. Just come. And then Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9, whoever walks in, in integrity walks securely. You wonder why you're always looking over your back and over your shoulders and say, you know what's happening? Well, as you walk in integrity, you will walk securely, the scripture says. You don't have to keep covering things up and say this and that. Okay, oops, I should have done this. Or oops, I, I shouldn't have said that. Or I should have you know, not told that lie and uh, I have to now cover it. Well, the Bible says if you walk in integrity, you will walk securely. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Again, I'm... I'm Sharing all these verses to let us realize the Word of God is so rich. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. That's the promise God has. It won't be more than you can handle. And then, when the temptation comes, He will give you a way out. Give you the way out. Okay? And so the temptation, the word temptation here is not just the temptation towards sin. It's trial. It's difficulty. It's problems as well. Psalm 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Okay? Remember, as a teenager, okay, I would, be, I, I would borrow my mom's car. I would use the car, and I would drive no concern at all. Okay? I wouldn't even know how she was concerned about me. Now that I'm a dad, I'm concerned. Okay? I'm now a parent, and I realize my son drives my car okay, and, 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 and comes home later than I am coming home, and so I have to be praying for him. Okay? I pray for my children when they go out of the house. Okay? So anyway, sons and daughters, okay, appreciate your parents. Okay? 
Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap. Some of you need to hear this. Don't stop doing the right thing, even if it's the hard thing. Don't give up because you will reap a harvest. The Bible says that. Exodus 12, 20 verse 12, honor your father and your mother. Their days will be long in the land that the Lord is giving you. I was telling this story on the other side uh, in the 11 o'clock service because Pastor Joseph is there with me and he was talking, I was saying, you know, because uh, you see Pastor Joseph now, he, he's, he's, uh, he's shaved all his head, uh, not head, but hair rather, <laughs> okay, not his head, hair. Okay, so you see a scar there because he, you know, bumped his head and cracked his skull when he was, you know, several years ago and almost lost his life. But I remember Pastor Steve telling Pastor Joey, he said, you know, Joseph's going to live a long life. He's not going to die. Okay, this was the time when he was very critical, almost lost his life. He's not going to die. You know why? Because the Bible says if you honor your father and your mother, you'll have a long life. Guess what? Your son Joseph, this is what Pastor Steve said to Pastor Joey. Your son has honored you all his life. He's going to live long. True enough. You, know, you see Joseph bouncing around, okay? okay. More active than Tigger, okay? Uh, so the second thing, okay? Remember his promises. Number two, resist settling. Resist settling. Numbers 26, okay, is the chapter before Numbers 27. <laughs> and, uh, but, but the reason why I bring this out to you guys is this. It lists down, again, when you read through Numbers, some of you are going through the Bible, right? And so you like, we go to Numbers, and so after Numbers 1, 2, 3, go, you know, you're, you're asleep already, okay? Because it's, it's a lot of names, a lot of numbers, okay? And clans, families. But it is impor this is important. Why? Because it lists down who gets what. And then verse 33 says all these names, right? And then it real they realize, okay, they are getting overlooked. And that's why they had to go. And so, you know, the daughters of Z could have settled, okay, this culture. I guess we got to live with it, right? Mm, okay, uh, well, we have our house. Or maybe I can just get married to somebody who has a lot, okay? But they didn't settle. We have an inheritance. They go to Moses. They go to uh, uh, Eleazar. Give us the land. They resisted from settling. Some of you here, this is the word of the Lord from, for you today. Resist settling. Don't just camp where you're at. God has a lot more for you. You've, you know, you're in a cycle of addiction. You've done everything possible. Self-help books, psycho. Uh, therapy, all these things, and yet you're still there. You've gone through Victory Weekend. You've gone through a Victory Group to Victory Group to Victory Group. Listen, you don't settle. Go to Jesus, okay? It's not Victory Group. That's the answer. That's helpful. It's not Victory Weekend. That's the answer. That's helpful. Jesus is the answer, amen? And so come to Him. Just come to me, and I will give you rest. Resist settling. Somehow we've accepted things sometimes. I grew up like this. I'll probably just die like this. I was born in this family. I'll die in this family. And I, you know, I have a crummy job. I'll probably stay in this crummy job forever. And so, you know, you, you just settle. You just begin to settle. I, I have a, you know, I have a lousy marriage. I'll probably just end up just, I'll just endure this marriage. Don't settle. Don't settle. God has great things in store don't stop there don't stay there some of us you know even culture we go you know this is what culture dictates i don't want to go against culture all right i mean i remember when when my wife and i before a few months before my wife and i got married she had a bridal shower and this was with office mates and friends and somebody came up and said you know advice portion right Okay, some of the married people, some of the others who had wisdom uh, came up and said, you know, Jen, um, I'm glad you're getting married. We're so happy. We're excited for you, right? And I'm glad you're getting married to Paolo. He's a great guy. I'm glad they thought that was great, okay? And so, you know, he's a great guy. And so, but, uh, but here's the thought. He said, uh, you know, they said, maybe one day your husband's going to go off somewhere, maybe a fling here and there or a, an affair, just, you know, expect it. Just expect the worst. And just, you know, um, advice, right? This is a few months before she was getting married. And it's just, let me say it in Tagalog and I'll say it in English. In Tagalog, this is what they said. It said, 
uh, basta umuwi sa'yo, dapat masaya ka na. How many of you have heard of that? You've heard that, right? Basta sa'yo umuwi, okay na. As long as he goes home to you, then you should be fine by it and you should, you should be okay. And in her heart, she just felt, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to receive this. I'm not going to settle for that. Okay? And so, so she settled for me. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> pray for change for that man. Okay? So anyway, um, resist settling. Don't let the devil lie to you. He said so many lies, and you can no longer distinguish sometimes if it's your voice or the devil's voice. Resist settling. Number three, and we'll wrap up with this one. Receive the answer. Now, fast forward several years, okay? Uh, Moses has passed away. He's already dead. There's a new leader, Joshua. Okay, son of none. You know, he, he, he had no parents because he was son of none. Yeah, okay. So, jo- <laughs> sorry, sorry. Joshua 17 verse 4, the Bible says, They went before Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of none, and the leader said, The Lord told Moses to assign us the land among our relatives. So Joshua assigned them the land. This is years after they entered the promised land. And so, in other words, he was saying, we're ignored. We've been forgotten. Nakalimutan na kami. We've been forgotten. You know, we, we were supposed to receive a land and a portion, a land. So now he goes to Joshua. Joshua, don't forget us. Okay? Z's our daddy. Okay? And so now he does get, they do get their, their portion, their land. Okay? And here's the thing. What they fought for actually became a statute and a law. What happened was, now, we read a few verses after, right? Sabi niya, the Bible says, because of that, God said to Moses, they're right, give them. And from that day, that day forward, every time there was no male heir, it was given to the daughters, it was given to the uncles, the brothers. It became a guideline to situations like this. And let me say this, sometimes your breakthrough is connected to another person's breakthrough. That's why you need to push for it. Claim it. Go for it. See, the answer, is it possible? The answer that you're claiming to receive may pave the way for the breakthrough others are desiring to achieve. Is it possible? Maybe. You know, every Friday night, we have a small group and our our, uh, uh, we have a couple's group, my wife and I lead. <clears throat> There's a couple there, their names are Eric and Gail. They live in the States for 20 plus years, but came home to um, Manila about a year, year and a half ago. And you know what, what they felt? This is what they felt. We felt like God was calling us into a ministry. And when I first heard it, I said, okay, w- which mission organization are you from? None. Okay? There was no in, they, were, they weren't included in any mission organization. There was no church that was sending them. They just really felt God has placed a call in their life to come back to help our nation. I said, okay, how do you feel God's call you to help the nation? What they would do, they would build businesses and so that it, it could allow more jobs. They start, they, they start everything and anything now. They started a junk shop so that they could employ people. They started a taho. Uh, uh, ano selling taho, okay? Uh, what's taho in English? Teho, okay? Uh, soybean, okay? It's with soybean and uh, brown syrup, okay? You would you probably see that with those containers, right? And so they have about, well, I don't know, 200, 300 taho vendors all over. So just in case you buy one, you ask them, do you know Eric and Gail? Maybe that's them, okay? And so, um, and so taho, and then they had several karinderia or just canteens. And then prayer and fasting time, they came and asked for prayer and said, um, we're praying for this call center that we would become a concessionaire for their lunch, breakfast, dinner, okay? So that we would be one of their concessionaires, okay? And so they were praying for that breakthrough. They got their breakthrough. And you know what? The Lord answered. And the thing was this. Their breakthrough was actually connected with other people's breakthrough. Why? Because it provided 20 to 30 jobs because of that. And again, some of you have companies with 400, 500, 2,000 employees, and I, I understand that's huge. No? But this one, he said, in my own small little way, we will do this to help the nation. You see, 
It's, is it possible that the answer you're claiming to receive may pave the way for the breakthrough others are desiring to achieve? They're wanting your breakthroughs connected to their breakthrough. Some of you here, that, you're in that situation today. You're settling, but not little do you know, God's already calling you and pursuing you and loving you and pouring out His unconditional love. So I want to pray today as we end our time. Um, could you bow your heads for a moment? Let's, let's just pray. Father, thank you for that, Lord, we can approach you and approach your word and appreciate, Lord, what you have done for us. Lord, the Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Two things I want to pray uh, today, this afternoon. is Number one, some of you here today, you know that you're far away from God. You know that you have Sin has caused this spiral, downward spiral in your life, and you're no longer walking with Him. Or maybe you've never really have a re had a relationship with Him. Your parents dragged you to church. Your friend asked you to come. Or maybe you're coming to church a while, and yet the realization of forgiveness, redemption, new life hasn't really been genuine and real. And so I want to pray for you. If you're here today, I feel there's a few of you that God's calling you, and as a response to that call, you will surrender your life to Him as Lord and Savior of your life. If that's you today, could you just raise your hand? I feel there's a couple of you that need to make that decision. Just raise your hand. It's okay. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Four of you. Five, six, seven. Anybody else? Eight. God bless you. Anybody else? Nine. Okay, there's several, many of you. Just pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you. If you loved me when I had no clue how much you did, because you died so that I can have forgiveness, so that I can, I can have a fresh start. So, Lord, I pray for myself that, Lord, I would live a life that would honor you. I receive you in my life, Lord. Be my Lord and Savior. You gave your life to me. In response, I gave my life to you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. You can put your hands down. Lord, thank you for these that made this decision. I pray, Lord, that they will grow in their faith, that they will walk according to your ways, and that they would be connected to somebody so that they will continue to grow. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we all stand as we end? One last prayer I have is this. Some of you here today, it's loud and clear what the Lord is telling you. Don't settle. Resist settling. I don't know what your situation may be. Whether it's your business, your job, your, the workplace, family, your marriage, your children. Your children have rebelled and you've just settled. Oh, they're always going to be like that. Your spouse, they're always going to be like that. Your parents, some of you here, your parents, they just keep on fighting day and night, and you've settled, oh, they're going to be like that forever. Don't settle. Our God is a miracle-working God. He's a covenant keeper, and He loves His children. He loves you. So I want to pray that you will not settle, that you will say, Lord, okay, I'm, I'm claiming this promise. So you said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We will be saved together with our household. You said, Lord, you shall supply all our needs according to God's riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You said, Lord, you are my light and my salvation. I should not be afraid of anything. You said, you said, you said. Bow your heads with me. Lord, thank you for your word that gives us the audacity to come to you. Because the promise is really just as good as the promise giver. 
the reason why we will have audacity or the courage to come to you it's not because we deserve it not because we're worthy but because you called us your sons and daughters and because we are your children not by our, our merit or by our good our good works but because of what you've done for us Jesus then we can approach you with boldness and with audacity that we will not settle so if we're un- we're stuck you will get us unstuck in our walk with you and that lord if we are Lord, our families are breaking apart. Lord, this is not the will of God. We can trust you that you will restore relationships. And Lord, if there are things, Lord, that Lord, our, our business are falling apart or, or finances are just really way in over our head, we won't settle because you are a covenant keeper. So thank you, God. We just give you honor and we give you praise, Lord. We're going we're gonna to move forward. We're going to walk by faith and not by sight. We're not going to look at the circumstances. We're going to look at you. We're going to look at you. We're going to look at you. Thank you, Lord.